Good afternoon. Today's the 21st of June. I've got my headphones back, so we're using the usual camera again. And it's time to scour the wonders of the World Wide Web once again as we search for sensible family transportation that I would buy for myself for under £5,000. If you've got £5,000 to spend on a car, but you're actually in a reasonably privileged position. In this country, we enjoy some of the lowest second-hand car prices in the world, and the choice of cars on offer is remarkable. For this exercise, um, I'm only going to choose cars I'd personally, you know, um, hypothetically want to own if I had this sort of budget to spend on a car that I was going to keep for some time. We're only going to look at cars that are very practical. That means a boot size of over um, 440 litres. A lot of mainstream family cars don't actually have a boot that's bigger than about 350. And I don't think that's really big enough um, for um, the needs of a lot of families. We're only going to stay within a five mile radius of where um, I live in Eastleigh. We don't need to go any further than that in this sort of search. We're going to look at only cars that um, are less than 10 years old, so 2010 or newer. We're only going to look at petrol cars, we're not going to look at diesels. And um, we're going to look at cars with no more than 80,000 miles on the clock. With that in mind, let's get started. One of the first things you should do when looking at any second-hand car, however old it is, is to make sure that it's got a current MOT. All the cars that we're going to look at in this video do have current MOTs and in my search I actually found plenty which didn't have an MOT. Obviously if the car's under three years old it doesn't require one but um, the sort of budget we're looking at we will be uh, investigating cars made between about 2011 and 2012 in which case you will need one. I'm also going to completely avoid cars um, that are showing on the database as being uh, written off or scrapped, because um, that's a whole other area that I, we don't need to go into. First of all, I found a 2012 Seat Atea XL. Now this has the 1.4, um, what's called the twin charger engine in it. Um, this um, is a supercharged and turbocharged engine, developing 125 horsepower. The car isn't particularly fast because of, you know, the Atera XL is a very, very large car. Um, but it will do 0 to 60 in about 10 seconds or so. The fuel economy is reasonable. This particular car has done well under 80,000 miles, 75,000 miles in fact. It's got a year's MOT history, it's got a full service history, and um, it's a very good specification. It's got parking sensors and I believe cruise control. Definitely something I would recommend. It's even a nice colour. It's a very similar colour to mine, in fact. Next, we've got um, a 2011 uh, Mazda 5 2 litre Sport. This particular car um, was the sort of upper end of the range, so it's got things like leather seats. Mazda is generally very reliable cars, or they do, or they do suffer sometimes from um, rust. This one is starting to show very, very early signs of that on... Um, the cells, but it's nothing to worry about at the moment. The car um, does have a year's MOT on it. It's got a good service history and it's done 77,000 miles. This car's up for just under £5,000 and um, it's probably the best looking of all the cars I've got on the list. Next we've got um, a 2012 Skoda Fabia uh, estate. Um, I reviewed the new generation of one of these on uh, my YouTube channel. Um, about six months ago. This particular one um, is the 1.2 TSI Elegance. This is the top of the range model, so it's got cruise control, parking sensors, air conditioning, alloy wheels, fog lights, that kind of thing. Um, this 1.2 TSI engine is actually very, very um, economical. It will do you between 50 and 55 miles per gallon, not to 16 in around 10 seconds or so. The colour is again good on this. There are a couple of minor advisories on the MOT from what I can see, but nothing to worry about. 
Um, it's up for £4,500 or thereabouts, and it's done 77,000 miles. One of the things I maybe should have mentioned um, about looking for a car in this sort of price bracket is that you'll end up generally an independent dealer or possibly a private seller. It's quite unusual for a car of this age to be at a main dealer, but this particular one is actually. Weirdly, with main dealers, they don't tend to list a lot of information about the car, an auto trader advert in this case. Um, there's no mention of service history or what sort of MOT the car's got. Now, the car has got an MOT because I've checked, um, but it does need renewing quite soon. I imagine, just looking at this, they, the car's probably got a full service history. But I do find that a bit annoying when main dealers give less information about a car than an independent dealer or a private seller would do. Generally, when you're buying it from a main dealer, you expect a greater level of service than from an independent or a private seller. Um, but uh, anyway, this is a 2011 Vauxhall Mariva 1.4 um, SE. Now, Vauxhall trim levels are extremely confusing. Um, this looks like a sort of upper medium trim. There were many, many different trims for the Mariva. Um, but this has um, parking sensors and um, cruise control and air conditioning. It's got the 1.4 turbo engine developing around 120 horsepower, um, which will give reasonable fuel economy. The mileage is only 63,000 miles, which I think is pretty reasonable for this sort of car. One of the things I often say um, when looking at second-hand cars is that Vauxhalls do represent extremely good value for money. This uh, particular car, which is a 2011 Vauxhall Zafira, is no exception to that at all. This car um, does have um, a good level of equipment. It's got uh, front and rear parking sensors. It's got um, air conditioning. It's got a level wrap steering wheel. Again, being a Vauxhall, the trim levels are very, very confusing. Um, this is a 1.6 exclusive. Um, the engine is, by modern standards, not that powerful or, or completely economical. Um, but this was probably one of the better petrol engines the Zafira had in terms of the economy. There was a turbo engine in the Zafira, but it wasn't very economical. And of course, we're being very sensible today. Uh, so this particular car, uh, the MOT um, is for about a year or so. Um, the service history is very good. Um, the Flex 7 seating arrangements in a Zafira is extremely good. They don't look very um, interesting, Zafiras particularly, um, but they are very, very reliable cars generally. Although in this particular car, it doesn't mention some of the advert, but you would need to make sure that um, the recall for this car that's been very well publicised has been carried out. Apologies for the, the uh, dark um, level of light in this video. I don't quite know why when the day's actually not that, uh, not that bad, but it's looking so dark, but there we go. Um, anyway, I uh, hope you found that video informative. Um, we'll do another one of these next week and we'll up the budget to £10,000. Um, so, um, if you wish me to source a car for you, um, this is the sort of thing I do for clients all the time. So, uh, yes, a little insight into my world once again. Um, then please do get in touch. Um, my website is the best place to do that. Um, it's www.lloydvehicleconsulting.co.uk and there's a contact tab on the homepage there. If you wish to look at my Facebook page, then that would be wonderful. Um, there's lots of updates on there. Um, and that is facebook.com forward slash Lloyd Vehicle Consulting. As ever, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Don't forget uh, to leave a comment below. Don't forget to like this video. Um, all the um, cars that I've, I've been searching for today are linked to in the description below. Thank you ever so much indeed for watching.